Good morning, friends. Welcome to Walking Through His Word. I'm here with you today. My name is Darina Lazo Gilmore Young. I am so excited for this next about 30 minutes that we'll be spending together. Every Friday, I come and share this time, gather people on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, just as an opportunity for us to do exactly what the title is, Walking Through God's Word Together. And what that means is I'm actually going verse by verse through a psalm. We're actually on Psalm 68 today. So if you'd like to follow along in your Bible, I just encourage you to get your Bible out. Um, if you are commuting or running or walking, you can just listen along. No problem. I know many of you do that as well. And this is recorded. So if you ever miss it or you miss part of the broadcast, you can always listen to it. You can find it on my Instagram profile, on my IG lives. You can find it on YouTube or also on my Facebook author page, Darina Lazo Gilmore Young, comma author. So this is just a weekly way that I love to connect with people in my community, my readers, my family, and all of you. And I wanted to shout out uh, say hello to my friends in the Widow Mama Collective this morning. I'm excited that some of you are joining me live and maybe watching this a little bit later. I pray that you are encouraged by the words of Psalm 68. And welcome to the Glory Chasers Christian Running Group, which is another group on Facebook that my husband Sean and I helped to facilitate. I see a bunch of friends are logging on live here on Instagram. Just want to say good morning and hello to Mama T. My parents are here. I see some new friends. Please introduce yourself in your in the comments because I know some of you have kind of different names for your Instagram, but let me know what city you are joining from. It's so fun to see how this brings together people from all over the world. I see my friend Esther is here and Abby and Jen. So glad that you're with me and some other friends who are joining over here on Facebook as well. I can't see your comments yet. Um, but just drop a little emoji, say hello, let me know what city you're joining from. And this morning, we're going to dive into Psalm 68. Psalm 68. So it looks like some people are having a little trouble hearing me. Um, I'm not sure. Mama T, you might have to try to reload it because I think the sound is working. Um, just let me know in the comments if you can hear me okay this morning. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 68, and to just give you a little bit of context on this one, I did a little bit of research. This is actually a hymn of praise that is written by David, and I love this psalm because it is a song, and it's an invitation for us to sing, an invitation for us to praise. So we went through many dozens of lament psalms. So if you've been with me through the weeks, you know that we've done a lot of these lament psalms where there is just David crying out to God. He is in a place of sickness and doubt and being pursued by others, um, trying to be the king who is trying to kill him, who's his father-in-law and his son. Just so much hardship that he's weathered through. But it is refreshing to see that David also had these psalms of praise. And so the mood of this psalm in particular, Psalm 68, is a mood of joy. You will see that there's a celebration even in the words. And depending on what translation you're reading, there's even a little nod to Hamilton, or perhaps Hamilton is a, is a nod to um, this Psalm, Psalm 68. Hamilton is one of our favorite musicals over here at our house. And um, I love that phrase, rise up. So let's think about that as we are diving in. I'm going to read the ESV version. I always like to start with ESV because it's more of a word-for-word -word translation in English. And then I love to also look at other versions and translations which help to just enrich the experience of the scriptures. So let me know, is there a favorite translation that you like to read or maybe that you are reading this year? I know I grew up reading and memorizing out of the NIV and the New King James Version and more recently came to the English Standard Version. Um, or maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about. You didn't realize that the Bible came in so many translations. I invite you to share in the comments, ask any questions, and I love to share resources. Friends, let's dive in. Psalm 68. God shall arise. His enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. 
as smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away as wax melts before fire. So the wicked shall perish before God, but the righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord, exalt before him, father of the fatherless and protector of widows. Is God in his holy habitation? God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel, rain in abundance, O oh God. You shed abroad, you restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it, in your goodness, O oh God. You provided for the needy. The Lord gives the word. The women who announce the news are a great host. The king of the armies, they flee. They flee. The women at home divide the spoil. Though you men lie among the sheepfolds, the wings of a dove covered with silver in its pinions with shimmering gold. When the Almighty scatters kings there, let snow fall on Zalman. O mountain of God, Mountain of Bashan, O many peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan, why do you look with hatred, O many peaked mountain? At the mount that God desired for his abode, yes, where the Lord will dwell forever? The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them. Sinai is now in the sanctuary. You ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious, that the Lord may dwell there. Blessed be the Lord who daily bears up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong deliverances from death. But God will strike the heads of his enemies and the hairy crown of him who walks in his guilty ways. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea that you may strike your feet in their blood, that the tongues of your dogs may have the portion from the foe. Your procession is seen, O God, the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in front, the music musicians last, between them virgins playing tambourines. Bless God in the great congregation. The Lord, O oh you who are of Israel's fountain, there is Benjamin, the least of them in the lead, the princess of Judah in their throng, the princess of Zebulun, the princess of Naphtali. Summon your power, O oh God, the power, O oh God, by which you have worked for us. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings shall bear gifts to you. Rebuke the beasts that dwell among the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the people. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Nobles shall come from Egypt. Cush shall hasten to stretch out her hands to God. O kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Behold, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God from his sanctuary. The God of Israel, he is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Friends, I was just reading from Psalm 68 in the ESV translation, and it's a long one for sure. David is preaching a sermon through this song. It reminds me of some of the hymns of old that have many different verses and are telling a story. And so David here is telling a story of God's care for and his protection of his people. And so we see that David is calling the people to praise. He's calling God to rise up in verse 1. 
and the way that God did rise up against their enemies. So he's describing that. And I love that throughout this psalm, we see this very poetic language. David is painting with beautiful imagery this vision of God and who he is. And even that first verse, God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. That's actually a hearkening back to Numbers chapter 10, verse 35. So again, he's drawing on the scriptures, on the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible, which they memorized and often referred to. David is referring to that here. And we see that it is an invitation for people who are listening and for those who are singing along that they are invited to praise. They are invited to recognize that God is the one to be worshiped. So I always ask this question of the text. We do this every time and I'm modeling for you what it might look like for you to read the Bible on your own, to dig through the scriptures and do a little treasure hunting. So I always ask this question, what do we learn about God through this psalm or through this hymn of praise that we see David has written? And the first thing that we see, there's actually so much in this psalm. It's a pretty long one, like I said, and I read through that. We hear this kind of sermon that David is preaching. So I'm going to center today on five qualities of God that I want us to remember and to hold dear in our hearts. And I know that even in this present time of chaos and fighting and a pandemic and so many who are navigating personal challenges, I want us to remember who God is. In verse 5, what jumps out at me is that it says that God is the father of the fatherless and the protector of widows. It's a beautiful reminder that our God cares for those who are vulnerable. He cares for those who are suffering. And you know, years ago with my late husband, Eric Lee, we actually had gone through the Bible and tried to read as many passages and scriptures that we could find that were about the fatherless, which is another way to say the orphan. And it's interesting because most of those scriptures also talk about the orphan and the widow. So the two of those together. At the time, I did not realize what the future would hold for me and for my family. I did not know that after 11 years of marriage, my husband would graduate to heaven. And so as I was studying about the orphan, because we had a heart for orphans, as I was studying about the fatherless and God's heart for the fatherless, alongside my husband, Eric Lee, God was also illuminating some scriptures for me about God's heart for the widow. And so when I was widowed seven years ago, those verses came rushing back to me. They were powerful as a reminder that God not only cares about my children, the fatherless during that season, but also that he cares to protect those who are widows. And so this verse, these couple of verses here are just so meaningful for me in that way. And we see that God has these two character qualities. He is a father. And for those people out there who are listening, I know there are some who maybe did not have a good relationship with their father just a sweet reminder that God is our father, that he is holy, that he longs to protect us and to love us. And then that second character quality is that he is a protector. And as it says here in the ESV, he is a protector of widows. And I've seen that over and over again in my own life and the ways that God has protected me, has put a hedge of protection around me. But I've also seen this for my widow friends and for any who might be listening this morning, that God has special provision for us. And it doesn't mean that we don't struggle. It doesn't mean that we don't have bills that, you know, we are not able to pay. That That's true. And that happens sometimes. And I know many who are just um, struggling today. But I want to remind you that God also is a creative God who longs to protect those who are vulnerable, those who are suffering. And so we are to lift our eyes to see the ways that he is providing for each one of us. So we see that in verse 5, that he is the father and the protector. And then I'm going to kind of summarize from verses 7 through 14. We have 
this vision of God as a restorer. In verse 9, it says, Reign in abundance, O God. You shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it is languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. The The Lord gives the word. And so right there, wrapped up, there are many character qualities we could call out. He's a restorer. He is good. He's a giver. But I think it's kind of encompassed in this idea that God restores. And I love that word restores because it just is a vision for us. I don't know if you have ever seen maybe a house or a piece of furniture that has been reclaimed or restored where someone who comes in, and I don't have these skills, but I've witnessed it, I've seen it, someone who comes in with a vision and the skills to restore something, to restore something back maybe even to reclaim it and to make it beautiful in a new way by using that core structure. God is that kind of restorer for us. And we see that he restores, he brings back the inheritance that is languished and he gives the word. And one of the ways that he can restore us, that he restores our souls is by reading his word, by living his word, by writing out his word, by singing his word, which David was doing here in this psalm, Psalm 68. I was reminded even last night of how God's word restores. I'm getting ready to be a part of and help lead a Bible study at my church through the book of Numbers, but it doesn't start until a little bit into February. So I'm in between studies that I'm teaching myself or that I'm leading And it always affords some space for some quiet reflection. And also, I always find that I have some weeks of kind of wandering. Maybe you can experience this too, or you have in the past. You can share a little emoji in the comments or give me a thumbs up if you've experienced this, where it's like, well, what should I read? I don't know where to begin. And you feel like, okay, I'm kind of wandering. I feel like I should read my Bible, but I don't know where and what I should center on. And obviously, there is so much here in this book that we could dive into. I have grabbed a couple of my devotional books that I have been given or have read in this past year to help and kind of guide me. And one of the things that I grabbed actually yesterday was this new devotional that's being put out by my friend Kathy Lip and Sherry Gregory. I think I might have mentioned it before. It's called An Abundant Place. It's a it's a small book, like a little gift book that you could give that you could keep on your bedside or in your bathroom. And I love it because the idea of it, that even the subtitle is daily retreats for the women who can't get away. So it's just a quick little retreat. But one of the things I wanted to point out here, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a rabbit trail from our Psalm 68, but Kathy in the beginning talks about this idea of creating space. And she gives this acronym SPACE. S for speak, P for ponder, A for act, C for commit, E for express. And what I love is that she's inviting us into this retreat to a deeper dive into scripture. And so she is inviting us to speak, to read the words of scripture out loud, which is what I just did. I read the entire Psalm 68 and even just listening and reading the word of God can minister to our hearts. And then she invites us to ponder And so after we read it aloud that we think and we ponder, we listen to those words. Why is God bringing this psalm to us in this season? And then she says to act, to act, S-P-A, act. What is the action that God is asking you to take in this verse? And then C is to commit. And so we ask and commit. We just see if there's a promise that is in there for us, a promise or something that we can learn about God, the question that I always ask of the test. And at the end, the final is to express. And she says, finally, take a moment to express to God how you think and feel about your time wrestling with this piece of scripture. Did you feel loved, cherished, or cared for, or maybe challenged, confronted, or even convicted? It's amazing what feelings and thoughts come up when you have a heart that has created space. And so this is what we're doing right here. We're creating space. And I was talking about how God is a restorer and how he restores our souls through his word. 
And so even us coming together each week and reading a psalm together, even if I said nothing in addition, even if I read no commentaries or extra resources, just coming together to read his word together and to declare it, there is power in that. It's so beautiful. And so friends, we've been looking at God's character qualities illuminated here in Psalm 68. I see a couple of people are just joining me. So thanks for hopping on here. And you can always watch the beginning of the recording later. But God is our father. He is our protector and he is our restorer. And then in verse four, we see that David is calling out perhaps the most important character quality of God. He says, blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. And it's so important for us to remember who God is, that he is our salvation. He is our savior. And I think it's interesting to think about this time in history that David was writing these Psalms hundreds of years before God sent his son Jesus to earth. But even in these times, God knows his plan. He knows what he's going to do. And he is offering salvation. And so David even has an awareness that God is our salvation, even though he doesn't know the entire plan and how it's going to unfold. But the salvation of us and of humanity, of those who choose to believe, is secured through Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. And so we then can have this daily assurance, this daily confidence that we can spend eternity with him despite our shortcomings, despite our sins. So Jesus came and he physically went in our place to death so that we could experience life. How powerful that is. And I think it's interesting because in this second half of the Psalm, Psalm 68, again, it had a lot of beautiful imagery there. It talks about God being our salvation in verses 19 and 20. I'm reading from the ESV version, but then it talks about this procession and it kind of closes on this note of seeing God in a processional, a vision of God riding in triumph. And we see that starting in verse 24 and following. It says, your procession is seen, O God, the procession of my God, my King into the sanctuary. And so then David describes this processional. So he is saying the singers in the front, the musicians come last. Between them are the virgins playing tambourines. And he is calling out, bless God in the congregation. So again, this invitation to bless God. And we see that as he is summoning the people, as he is urging them to praise God for his faithfulness, he also is summoning the power of God. And so in verse 28, he says, summon your power, O God, the power, O God, by which you have worked for us. And then if we skip down to the end of the psalm, we see the same sentiment that is echoed. Verse 34, ascribe power to God whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God from his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. And so I want to conclude with this fifth and final character quality of God that we learn from Psalm 68, and that is that he is powerful. And David repeats it several times. I, I took out my pink highlighter and highlighted the number of times that he says that word power here in the ESV. Just in those couple of verses, he says it five different times. He talks about the power of God. And this was important in the context, in the time that David was living in, when there were so many battles and so much warring between the nations to recognize and to call out that God is the most powerful, that he is omnipotent, more powerful than any other gods and any other nations, that strength lies with him. But I see that there's also a little message, a little golden nugget for us on January 21st of 2022 that we also can remember that God is all powerful and that our strength comes from him. I don't know about you, but in this past couple of weeks, I've been feeling that fatigue, just knowing that this pandemic rages on. We have so many friends who actually have come down with COVID and I recognize that it's a different variant than what we've experienced in past years. We don't know all the details about it. Gratefully, many people are recovering from it, but I still felt that decision fatigue that, oh my goodness, here we go again. 
and the weakness in that, the helplessness that we feel in that. But here, Psalm 68 reminds us that when we are weak, God is strong. And that is actually echoed in the New Testament that in our weakness, God is strong. That's actually where he shines. That's where his power bubbles to the top. And it's interesting because in this final note here of Psalm 68, David is reminding us that he is the one who gives power and strength to his people. I don't know about you, but I needed that reminder today on this Friday that when I feel weak, when I feel fatigued, when I'm overwhelmed by the number of decisions that I need to make, when I'm living in 2022 in a pandemic that has raged on for almost two years now, I can depend on God as the one who is strong. And he actually gifts gift, like giving it to us as a gift. He gives it to us. He gifts us his power and strength because we are his people. And so we can walk in assurance, in confidence, and a peace that passes understanding, even in the midst of trials, my friends. Blessed be God, as David concludes Psalm 68. So a couple of quick takeaways for you today. I want you to think about, is there something that God wants you to hear Is there something that God wants you to do in response to this psalm? In response to Psalm 68, which we we just walked through together, we studied verse by verse. So here are three things that I feel called to. First is that we need to remember who God is and how he's been faithful to us. Number two is that we need to walk in his power and strength. As we just talked about, go back today and read verses 34 and 35, maybe even write out verse 35 to remind yourself of who God is. And the third is that we are to praise him for who he is. My word of the year this year is rejoice. I shared that a little bit with you last week, and I have been just really holding this word close to my heart. The idea of rejoicing is to return to joy. And so I believe here in Psalm 68, once again, David is inviting us to return to joy. He's inviting us to praise God for who he is and that even in the midst of trials that we can experience that deep joy when we believe in Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, that he rose again. When we believe that God, our father, is these five things, he is a Father, he's a protector, a restorer. He is our salvation and he is powerful. Friends, we're going to move into a time of prayer. And I know um, we studied a little bit longer today than we normally do. I like to leave a little bit more time for prayer, but this was a longer psalm. So thanks for joining me today as we've been going through this. I'm going to go ahead and pray. And if there are any prayer requests that bubble to the surface for you, feel free to share those in the comments. I'll pray through as many as I can. If there is a word or a character quality of God that just emerged today to encourage your spirit, just type that one word into the comments and let's agree together in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this invitation into Psalm 68, the words of David. We thank you that David, who spent lots of time lamenting and crying out and suffering and doubting, that he also had seasons of praise, seasons where he rejoiced and he came back to his joy. I'm so grateful for that model. And Lord, I long to enter into that praise and joy as well in 2022. And so I'm asking that for my friends. I'm asking for those who are listening today that we might be able to experience that as well. Lord, I pray for those who are fatherless, maybe for those who have lost a father, a father who has died, maybe a father who is estranged or far away, maybe a father who lives but is not emotionally present for his children. God, I know as it says here in verse 5 that you are a father to the fatherless. We know, Lord, that you care deeply about the orphan. We, you care deeply about those who are without an earthly father. And it says it in Deuteronomy 10, 18, and Isaiah 1, 17, and Psalm 82, over and over again, you talk about this idea that you long to be a father 
to the fatherless. I pray, Lord, that you would just, um, that you would remind us, Lord, that you care for us. Looks like we're having a little bit of trouble with the sound here. I'm going to see if I can get it back. Thanks for being patient here on Instagram. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. There was a little bit of an interruption there, but thanks for your patience. And we say, not today, Satan. We say <laughs> in the name of Jesus that even if people can't hear the sound of my voice, that we can join together in prayer. And we praise you that you are a father to the fatherless, that you are a protector of widows. I pray for my widow friends who might be listening this morning. I pray that they would feel your arms of protection around them. We thank you that it says in Isaiah that you are our husband and our maker. And so for any women who are needing this reminder today that you, God, are our husband with a capital H, we thank you, God, that you are our restorer. And I see in the comments here that so many are typing that word, restore, restorer, that that's what you do, Lord, that you restore us. You restore us to health. You bring us back. And so I pray for restoration in families. I pray for you to just restore your people. I pray for restoring of health for those who are sick. God, would you be with them? Lord, thank you that you are our salvation. We thank you that you are strong, that you are powerful. Thank you for that reminder, Karone, that you are strong. God, you are our strength and weakness. And I know I, for one, am raising my hand that I need your strength today and always and may we quickly go to your strength father when we feel weak when we feel confused when the chaos is swirling around us lord we pray all of these things in your precious son's name amen well thank you friends for joining me i'm so sorry it was a little bit distracting um i don't know if you can hear me over on instagram now i saw lots of comments that we lost our sound there for a moment and then it came back and some still couldn't hear so Thank you for being patient. I will um, try to download the video from Facebook today and put that over on my YouTube channel. So you can hop over to YouTube and just search my name on YouTube. Every week I post the walking through his word, but I pray that you just could agree with me in prayer, even if there were some blips in the sound. And friends, it, it, it truly is a joy for me to see how many of you come and join me live from all over the country for this time of walking through the Psalms. So we just finished Psalm 68. Next week we'll be on Psalm 69. Can you believe we've done 69 weeks of studying God's word together in this way? And I actually did other passages before we dived into the Psalms. I wanna remind you that if you are not part of my Glorygram tribe, I send out a special free newsletter every Saturday. It is a way of encouraging others and I like to share resources there. So hop over to DarinaGilmore.com, my website, share your email there. And I would love to just be able to connect with you a little bit more personally. I know the internet can get noisy sometimes. So this is a way that I stay in touch with people and just share some of the things that God is teaching me and some free resources, great books, um, podcasts and other things that are inspiring me. So hop over for that. And once again, today I shared about this book, An Abundant Place, which is a brand new devotional daily retreats for the women who can't get away. It would make a great birthday gift or maybe something even for yourself that you want to invest in. Um, you can hop over to Amazon for that. And I will actually share a link afterwards if you want to look at that one. Blessings to you, friends. Thanks for your patience and may God go with you. I will see you next Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific time.